Hi there, it's Taze. I've had quite a lot of interest in my flower pounding pictures that I put up earlier, so I thought I'd do a quick video to show you how I do it. So I've got the flowers out of the garden, and I've got a meat tenderising mallet, some baking parchment, and some mordanted cotton. It's been mordanted with alum. You can use cotton that hasn't been mordanted, and I've had quite good success with that, but I just wanted to make sure that perhaps the colour stayed a little longer than it might have done if I hadn't mordanted. So first of all, I prepare the flowers. So I do that by removing the stems and this calyx at the back, because you don't want any colours in there that aren't part of the flower. And then I just trim that down because it makes it easier to sit it flat onto your paper, onto your fabric, sorry. So then I lay them out in how I feel will be a pleasing design. So just lay them there. Don't put them too close together unless you want them to overlap because of course when you squash them, then they do spread out a little bit. So just lay them down how you think you might like them. And obviously the better quality of flower you've got, the better print you'll get. So once they're laid out on there, cover it with baking parchment. Now I use baking parchment because it protects my hammer from the colour. Because it's a wooden hammer, it would absorb any colour that comes out of the flower. And also I can see through it. And you'll see when I start to hammer just how important it is to be able to see what you've done and where you've been. Now I use my meat tenderising hammer, obviously not the tenderising bit, the back of it, because it's a large flat surface and this stops marks from the hammer coming out onto the, onto the cloth from the flowers. So hold everything in place and I just tap gently on a few of them just to get them held into place because they do move. So now that has just tacked them in place. And if I pull that back, you can see that they're beginning to be flattened. So now it's just a question of going around each one in turn until you're satisfied, till you're satisfied that all the colour has come out. So I'm sorry, I can't hammer quietly. Now you can see where it started to, to stick to the fabric. You start to see where the colour is coming out. So I'll be back in a minute when I've done all of this because you really don't want to sit and watch me hammer all of these. So once I've hammered for a little while, I want to check and see whether or not I've managed to hammer through all the parts of the petals. So I just pull the baking parchment back gently and you'll see like here, I haven't done this petal at all. I've missed a lot of it. This one could do with a little bit more. And there's a couple of small pieces here as well that need doing. So you can simply lay that back down over the top. And I find that lots of small hammer blows are better than trying to hit it really hard. So I'll just check again. Nope, still missed some here. Okay, so if I look at that, I can't see any pieces that I've missed particularly, maybe just a little bit in there. But you can also see how much you've done by how the baking parchment starts to crinkle. So once I've... Ooh. Once I'm happy with what I've done, take the back baking, page, baking parchment off. And then you can just ease off the flowers. Who will look rather sorry for themselves now, I'm afraid. And just peel them back.
and you're left with an impression. Now that one looks to me like it moved a little bit when I was doing it, so it's not quite as clear as the others, but it really doesn't matter. If you find they're particularly troublesome to get off, then you can leave them until they dry. But I just prefer to take them off when they're wet, partly because I am incredibly impatient. And there we go. So that's how you do flower pounding. Now, quite often it will go through the fabric and onto whatever you've got underneath, which is why I've got paper underneath. And sometimes you get an impression that's nearly as good as that one. So it's as well to put a nice piece of paper under there if you want to capture that. And all you need to do now is leave that somewhere nice to dry. I hope you enjoyed this and found it useful.